and welcome to Archives Live. It is Thursday, May the 13th, and please remember that this is every Thursday at 2.30. If you're watching it after, it's not going to be as interactive, but it's still informative. Um, if you have never come and joined us for Archives Live, let me explain what it is. Basically, you are making the choice of what local history we're looking at today, which could be anything from business, organization, crime, anything like that, that we could be looking at by your choices. And how, you might ask? Well, you need to choose a number between 1 and 10. That'll decipher which cabinet we're going into. After that, I'll ask you to choose another number. That'll tell us what file, and then we go from there. Some of the different things that we've looked at in the past have been crime files, uh, we've looked at history of the mill, we've looked at Moussini history, James Bakehost, um, specific individuals, lots of interesting stuff that way. As usual, I'll wait a little bit because I am here a little bit early today, um, so I'm not right on 2.30 at the dot. Um, if you are interested in submitting an archives request, you can do that a few different ways. And while I'm letting you pick your number between 1 and 10 and put that in the comment box, I'll start going over those ways. You can submit a request to us by emailing us directly at library at CochraneOntario.com. You can email me directly, ARDIS, at CochraneOntario.com. Give us a call, 705-272-4178. Or you can visit our website, www.CochranePublicLibrary.com. Click on the services tab, go to archives, and you will have all the information there on how to submit archives requests. Uh, I have quite a few right now, and I've got a lot done today. Hopefully, we'll get caught up with everybody's. So thank you very much again for being patient with us. We do appreciate it. Um, I say us a lot of times, but it's me down here in the basement. So thank you for being very patient. I appreciate it. If you have a number between 1 and 10, go ahead and throw that down in the comment box to the side, wherever it is located for you, and that'll tell us what cabinet we're going in today. Yay! That's the only yay, right? The stay-at-home order has been extended until June 2nd. Historic times we're living in. Historic times. <laughs> Hi, Kenny! So, yeah, again... Go ahead, don't be shy. And if you have any questions during this whole um, session that we're doing today, go ahead and throw them in the comment box as well. I will try my best to read them and answer them as I see them. And somebody just asked if we will be allowing people to archive. So the way that works is until the library is open and we're in a designated uh, color area by the Porcupine Health Unit, uh, the, the archives won't be open to the public. However, you can still put requests in. And if you visit our website, again, www.cochranepubliclibrary.com, and you go to the archive page, there are databases there where you can search. And you can search by for the Death, Marriage, Birth Index uh, database, which is for the newspapers for over 100 years. You can search in our filing database. And lastly, you can always check the library catalog because we do have a lot of local history books that can be checked out with your library card, which means you can physically hand, uh, handle them, you can read them, um, you can request copies of certain material, all of that is still possible. Physically being in a building, not so much. <laughs> okay, so we do have a number and we are going to be going into business and organization location history. So if I could get another number between 1 and 50, go ahead and throw it in the comment box. Any number between 1 and 50. Hi, Jamie. And something really interesting, if you're interested in these videos, you don't have to just watch them now on Facebook, because not everybody has Facebook. We are now on YouTube, so all of the archives live videos for 2021 are now on YouTube. As soon as we have enough subscribers, we might start going live from YouTube instead of Facebook, but for now, this is where we are. <laughs> okay, I've got a number, so bear with me while I go get that file.
So I got the file, and as usual, go ahead and keep putting numbers. If the file is not too big, we might be able to do another one. And this one is a little bit smaller, and it's on the Cochrane Lions Club. So let's see. Okay, it says Cochrane Lion Finley Bar makes a donation to Brenda Sisko, Red Cross Supervisor. The donation was for the Red Cross Homemaking, which is a long, uh, which is a local nonprofit organization providing Alzheimer respite programs in Cochrane. This is from the Cochrane Times Post, April twenty second, nineteen ninety five. Now I'll let you have a little look at the picture. Finley looking as sharp as always. And Finley is still hard at work for the Lions Club. I think he's everywhere. He's magic that way. And then we have an, another clip with that same picture. That was cool. Okay. And then we've got Cocker Lions Club in action. This is from the... Cochrane Times, Saturday, January 7th, 1995. And it says, Bill Mitchell and Jack Ratcliffe, Jack Ratcliffe leaf through the scrapbook of photos and newspaper articles of all the good works that the Lions Club of Cochrane have accomplished. A great deal of effort by the members for the community fills these pages with pride and good tidings and good feelings for the work that is appreciated and supported by the community. And uh, there's so Mr. Mitchell and Jack Crackler. Very nice picture of both gentlemen. And then we've got Cochrane Lions Club TV Bingo was a hit uh, in November. The popular game is a chance for fun in the works. And then Lions Club is a kid's best friend. Uh, and again, here we go. We've got Jack, Jack Ratcliffe. So we'll show you a few of the pictures. Here's a nice picture. The kids. And then we've got that one as well. <laughs> and it's a large article, so I didn't read all the article. Okay, this is from Cochrane Times, Saturday, March 1st, 1997. Lions Club celebrates 35 years of service. And this says, Ron Owens, charter president, continues to make a contribution to his community as an active lion, 35 years after the club was first introduced to the community. Very nice picture of him. Have a look at that. Okay. And then there's a gorgeous picture here that says, the Lions Club posed for a picture in the, in the early 1960s when the club was in its infancy. So there's RJ Andrews, Bill Mitchell, John Dwarf, Jerry Leonard, John Shirley, Gord Banks, John Schumacher, Ron Horton, Owens, Ken Roshaw, Jim Swivel, Vern Leonard, Roy Telford, and Vince Cloutier, and Jack Crockgrave. And it's a gorgeous picture, so we'll put it up here for you to look at. If you know any of the family members or anything of these uh, gentlemen, feel free to go ahead and tag them in this video or share this video with them. And just a reminder that if someone does not have Facebook, this video will be uploaded later to YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll be able to share it from there. Then anyone has access to it. Very nice. So it's a very nice article. It's very detailed as to all of the contributions that the Lions Club do. Okay, this is from... The Cocker Times Post, May 31st, 2002, where it says the Lions Club celebrate 40 years of serving the community of Cochrane. It says, Ron Owens and Bob Sweet, founding members of the Lions Club, took part in the 40th anniversary held on Saturday. I'll read this one a little bit. It says, the Lions Club originally began in Cochrane back in 1961, when the Lions International wanted to have as many Lions Clubs in small communities as possible. The local people of Campus Gasing and the district governor at the time wanted to get Cochrane into the club, commented one of the founding members, Ron Owens. Owens indicated that in the beginning, there were 22 members. Today, Lions Club is standing at 17 regular members, four members at large, and two honorary members. 
They are Ron Owens, Bill Mitchell, Roy Telford, Vince Cloutier, Finley Barr, Peter Picard, Victor Brett, Jim uh, Riddle, Richard Worrell, Gary Beacock, Richard Moore, Bill Bell, Jerry R Robichaud, uh, Mamie Dr Gage, Don Pepin, and Ralph Johnson. The members at large include R.J. Andrew Andrews, Rennie Tenzin, Jerry Leonard, and Ken Rose Shaw. The honorary members are Rob LaFive and J.P. Perrault. Uh, the first fundraising event carried out by the Lions Club back when it was, <laughs> back then, was selling licorice. Anybody remember that? When the Lions Club used to sell licorice? We went door to door and sold boxes of licorice. We sold them for a dollar a box. We made 50 cents profit. It was fundraising, but not fun raising it, commented Owens. The Lions Club has continued to remain visible and active in the community. You may recall the yearly event, the Christmas Telethon, which enabled the Lions Club, along with the support of the community, to help make Christmas a little brighter for those fortunate, less fortunate. In the past few years, the Lions Club, along with the Cochrane Food Bank, have joined together ensuring needy families have a memorable Christmas. Another popular event conjured up by the Lions Club was the Ontario Northland Santa Express. This event brought the community together for children for a small fee. The Lions Club requested a donation to the food bank for a ride. To this date, over 300 children ride the train to pick up Santa. To pick up Santa. Each summer, the Lions Club hosts a picnic for seniors, which has been held over the last few years at the Memorial Park. Another longtime service to the community is a yearly visit from the IVAN. When it first started, it only came for a week. Now we have it for two weeks. More and more people are using it, and perhaps next it will be in Cochrane for three weeks, Owens remarked. As well, the Lions continue to collect eyeglasses for these could be dropped off at Vince's. Now they can be dropped off at the library. Um, those who attended the annual Torchlight Parade during the carnival can thank the Lions Club, who for years provided free hot chocolate and hot dogs for the kids. This small club has provided financial assistance to Hillcrest Park, the bandstand, and countless donations to individuals in the community requiring, requiring, requiring wheelchairs, scooters, and other needed supplies. These events and donations would not have been possible without the support of the community. Excuse me. Uh, with weekly televised bingo, the largest fundraiser for the Lions Club, all the money raised throughout the year at the bingos goes back into the community, said Owens. The Lions meet only twice a month and for the last 40 years have enjoyed a meal prior to their meeting. During their meeting, they're always seeking out areas to assist. We made donations to Villa Vinto, the cadets, figure skating, as well as a bursary to the high school, commented Owens. Owen stated that there's roughly $100,000 that runs in and out of the Lions Club during the year. That's a lot of money for a small organization. The Cochrane Lions Club can roar for years on to come at the accomplishments that they have contributed to the community to make Cochrane a better place to live. So it's a very well-written, nice article. And that was by Nora Egan. And that's everything that we have in this file. There are other files on the Lions Club, but this was the small one that got picked by your number. Something worth mentioning for the Lions Club as well is they do a lot of other things uh, now because that's from 2002. They do spring cleanup. Um, they're really advocating for families that are in need or individuals that are in need. Um, I know when I was a kid, uh, their program for the Christmas baskets was really appreciated um, by many people I know, including our family. So they do tons of wonderful things. If you ever want to uh, support them by playing bingo or chase the ace or whatever they're doing. Definitely a worthwhile cause. Um, okay, now we have one special little thing for you today, aside from this. I have been getting a lot of requests regarding these silver stone plates. Now, if you are curious about that because you're like, what are you talking about, silver stone plate? I'm going to show you just one second. This one I found at a yard sale long ago, <laughs> a few years back, um, and I had to get it for archives. And it's not in the bestest of shape. It's got a chip and it's been glued back together because it cracked at some point, but I had to save it. So 
it's going to be inverted. It's from 1929, this one. And it's the 1929 calendar that's listed around the plate. Okay. And these were, these are durable. They're not like the plates we get today that are just like, whatever. Um, and it says on it, compliments of M. Silverstone, Cochrane, Ontario. And quite a few people have been curious as to who was M. Silverstone? Silverstone, who is that? Silverstone actually had um, a clothing store, men's clothing, and uh, later on, ladies' clothing, in about 1928. And they used to give these out as um, kind of a token of appreciation around the holidays. And there's tons of them. If you want to see tons of great pictures of these plates from other years, and they're in different shapes, square, and they're they're very nice. You can check out the Cochrane Past and Present group. Uh, they have a lot of beautiful photos. I think there's one from 1936. Um, and the plate is more like square. and But they're still beautiful. And again, they're compliments of M. Silverstone. So that's just something I wanted to mention because I got a lot of requests as to who was M. Silverstone. Um, the clothing store was on 6th Avenue and uh, we do have a little file that's in progress on the history of that. Uh, there was also a dry, the dry goods store. So back at Cochrane history, a lot of times people didn't sell one thing. They would sell multiple things or they had family members that sold. They had different stores that were in proximity. And that's always a challenge trying to figure out where people were. Lots of great historians out there that are uh, wealth of knowledge. And we're always appreciative of all the hard work and all the information that they give us here at the archives that help us to kind of hone in and figure out some of these little mystery things. So again, that's where these plates are from, is from that store as a complimentary thing during the holidays they would give them out. Um, there are some of them have gone as far as England, Scotland, and that's awesome that the fact that they're still around, they're a beautiful collector's place, uh, piece. We have a few other plates, but they're not like these. Um, we don't generally make it a habit to actually collect pieces like this. The Heritage Village was doing that for a time where they would collect different artifacts. Uh, we generally just do records because we are an archive, not a museum. There's the difference, but every once in a while something sneaks in that can look pretty on a cabinet, and I saved it. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of random history for you. I hope you have a great weekend. You're safe. And again, if you have any questions or archival requests, you can submit them in a few different ways. You can email us directly, library at CochraneOntario.com. Ontario is a full word. You can email me, artis, A-R-D-I-S, at CochraneOntario.com. You can call us, if that's easier for you, 705-272-4178. Lastly, you can visit our website, www.CochranePublicLibrary.com. Make sure it's .com, not .ca, or you're going to Alberta. So .com. You're going to click on the services tab and then go to archives. All the information there on what you can request, different methods of requesting it, it's all available. Uh, we do appreciate donations to the, to the archives specifically if you are able to. If not, that's okay. We're, we're here for to aid the public in any way we can. I think that's it. So thank you again for joining us. These will be uploaded. This episode will be uploaded to YouTube. So again, if you want to watch it later or share it with someone, you can do it from there or even here on Facebook. Okay. See you soon, guys. Bye.